Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you all doing this evening? Great, great. I hear great, wonderful. I'm wonderful because you're wonderful too. <laughs> Glory to God. We serve a, a, a father. Your father, my father, is a great God. Amen. You know, just the consciousness, consciousness that I have a father that, that is strong just strengthens us. So let's just bless our father this evening and just thank him. You know, let's celebrate that. Our Father is a great God. With our Father, there is nothing that is impossible, you know. Our Father is not faced by what bothers us. Our Father is not caught on our ways. Our Father cannot be startled. Our Father cannot be surprised. So let's exalt. Can we rise up on our feet and just exalt our Father this evening? We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you, our Father. We thank you because you are for us. You are with us. You are an ever-present help. We celebrate you. We celebrate you.
Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. Our Father. Our Father. My Daddy. My Daddy. Our God will celebrate you. My Father. Very present help in time of need. Our Father source of our strength our father we celebrate you we celebrate you we celebrate you we celebrate you above all we celebrate you we celebrate you your majesty we declare 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 your majesty Haba father we celebrate you we celebrate. Oh, 
flesh come. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. Our delight, we exalt you. Our soccer, we exalt you. The rock that never fails, we exalt you. Our life, our hope, our future, we exalt you. Our satisfier, the one who satisfies our soul, we exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. Our strength, we exalt you. Oh, we exalt you. Oh, our help comes from you, oh God. No one else, no one else, no one else. Our help comes from you, oh God. No one else but you. No one else but you. No one else but you. You are strength, oh God. Hey. We praise you. We praise you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You are my strength. Strength like no
to me in the fullness of your grace in the power of your name you lift me receive your grace we receive it we bask in your love oh God thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah as we we're singing I was reminded that grace we were singing about the grace of God and grace is God's unmerited favor however it is not limited just to being defined as unmerited favor it is actually the fullness of provision for any need that we have so is it forgiveness of sins that you have need? God is saying, drink of my grace. Is it healing for your body that you need? He's saying, partake of my grace. Is it financial provision that, he's, that you need? He's saying, partake of my grace. Is it, is it wisdom that you need? Partake of the manifold grace of God. Just receive it by faith. I will give it to you. Father, we just thank you for that, God. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for how much you love each and every one of us. Lord, we bless your name tonight, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Well, go ahead and shout amen to the Lord, amen, and then you guys can go ahead and greet one another and have a seat. Also, it's time for your teenager in here our youth group's meeting over and across the way so they'll depart from us and 
go be blessed. Amen? Awesome. Well, good to see everybody tonight. So a um, couple of quick announcements, and then we're going to get into the Word. And um, I guess I'll give a little bit of a preview. So tonight we're going to teach on prayer, and we've been going through, teaching through the New Testament um, for the last several, couple months, actually, or I guess since February. Um, on Wednesday nights, I've been teaching through Sunday, which on and Acts, Acts is the history of the early church. And so we've been looking at that, and then on Wednesday nights, we've been going through and looking at the um, books of the Bible or the epistles as they were written in order. So we started with James, we did Galatians, and we're going to continue with that because part of my goal for everyone is that you really learn your Bible, right? We learn, you know, we're going through this challenging time in our nation and have been over the last uh, several, you know, two or three years. And, but I believe there's answers in the Word of God, amen? Um, but I want people to really understand that what happened here in the early church, man, they dealt with a lot of the same issues. And so there's answers in the Word. And so um, that's, that's why we're going. I want you to really understand your word and everything else. But tonight we're going to do something a little different. We're going we're gonna to take the next few weeks and do something on prayer. For uh, I've been feeling like we need to for a couple of reasons uh, tonight uh, or for the next few weeks. And the reason is uh, our next book I'm going to teach on is First Thessalonians, which I'm going to get there in Acts about the middle to the end of September. And so in about the middle of the end of September, we're going to teach on Thessalonians. Right, we'll look at where Paul started the church in Thessalonica in Acts 17 in late September. And so uh, I felt like that's probably a good time to introduce that book to each and every one of us so you can see how the two interrelate and interconnect. But then also we're in a time in our nation right now that we need to pray. You know, we've got kids starting back to school and we need to pray over our students. We need to pray over our teachers, principals, and, and, and all of those things. We're also about to come up on uh, another major national election. And we need to pray God's will is done. That the people God wants in office, not even the people we want, but the people God wants in office get there. And that righteousness happens, comes forth. And that also, that we have peace. However it all shakes out, right, we have peace. We have unity, right? And so we're going to talk about that. And then third, we're going to pray into revival. So I'm going to teach tonight. I'm going to teach next week. Craig's going to teach some. Tanya's going to teach some. But this is what we're going to be moving into over the next five weeks on Wednesdays. And so there will be worship. There will be some teaching. But then we're going to pray together, right? Pray for our needs that we have. And then pray for our nation. Y'all down? Awesome. Because even if you're not down, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to give the agenda for what we're doing tonight, but uh, if this is your first time here, if you didn't get a worship guide when you came in, if you'll put your hands up, our ushers want to find you, get you one of those, it'll give you more information on the church, um, some of the things that we have, kids ministry, youth ministry, small groups, all that good stuff, um, there's information in there, you can also bring, um, there's a connect card in there, if you fill out and bring it back to our welcome center after church, we'll get you a gift and we'll bless you, um, and uh, anyway, we'll do We'd love to connect with you. Um, also, as a reminder, on Wednesdays, we're doing a free community meal. Um, and so we'd really, I really would encourage it. Come out if you can't. I mean, you may, you may want to eat your own food, and that's fine. Um, but we'd encourage anybody to come out, uh, eat. You can give if you want to, but you're not required to. And, uh, but also invite your friends and neighbors. You know, sometimes people won't come to hear the Word of God, but they'll come for a meal. But then they'll end up hearing the Word of God, and that's what will change their life. You know, I got, I, got, I got hooked into doing some things over the years for, because like this one time, I, was, uh, I had this crush on this girl in my youth group, and so anyway, I went to like all these church events because I really had a bad crush on her, but you know what? Jesus began to radically deal with my heart, and so he knew that was a bait that would get me to church, and uh, he began to deal with me, and so anyway, God will use any kind of bait, and he'll use food, he'll use whatever to, to help us learn about him, Amen. So anyway, that's going on Wednesdays at uh, 5.30 to 6.30. And then also just a couple of reminders. We've got a big church yard sale going on July, the, uh, sorry, not July, September the 10th. That's a Saturday. So if you would like to donate clothing toward that, it's going to be clothing. And it's a targeted yard sale. So we're going to actually go out. And f we've got, um, we're working with a local school right now. Um, and then uh, some folks in lower income housing and whatever, we're going to give them free coupons, or they're going to give them coupons, grace bucks, that they can come spend at the yard sale. So it's not really a yard sale for everybody. It's a yard sale for those that have needs that we're really 
uh, trying to go out and uh, connect with. So if you are interested in donating, we're receiving those donations. Also, Craig, he'll talk more about this on Saturday, but he's going to be going out, or Sunday, he's going to be going out and um, reaching out and evangelizing, he and Melissa, um, and they're going to be going out and evangelizing some. So if you'd like to go do that and help connect, they would love to connect with you. So we'll talk more about that on Sunday, or he will. So we got that going on the 10th, and then on September the 18th, we've got Back to Church Sunday, which is going to be super awesome. We're going to have WBFJ here. We're going to have free food. We're going to have um, pounce houses and a lot of games. And it's going to be really, really good. And we'll be rolling out our new small groups that day. And it's going to be really, really, really super good. So anyway, just some things got going on. Um, and then, uh, again, so we're going to get into the word here now. And then as a reminder how we're doing our offering on Wednesdays. If you want to give, you don't have to give. But if you want to, uh, but offering boxes are in the back. We'll do that at the end, or give it uh, by text or, or online. You can always do that. So, All right, we're good on all the business. Yes? Do you all love the fact that I really make announcements succinct? I really try to make announcements succinct. I don't know if you've ever been to a church where they did 25 minutes of announcements. If you've never been, if you've been to one of those churches, you really appreciate me. <laughs> if you've never been to one of those churches, you are so blessed. Start calling people up. Hey, do you have something? We're going to talk about the women's potluck. And it's like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> you know, just relax. The men's fishing trip. They're like, settle down. All right. So, <laughs> anyway. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and get into the Word. Go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It's going to take me just a few minutes to get there. And so, I, I, want, to, I want to teach on prayer um, for just a few minutes. And then we're actually going to pray. And so, what I'm going to talk about tonight, there's different things, and, and I don't know what all Craig or Tanya will talk about when they teach, but there's the mechanics of prayer, and there actually are biblical principles about how to pray and get your prayers answered. I don't know if some of y'all are aware of that, but there are certain things that you can do and apply and ways to pray, and you can get more answers to prayer if you apply certain techniques, right? You with me? Um, and, and so there are certain things that you, you need to do, and you know, want to pray the will of God, you want to confess certain things, etc. Pray in faith. There's techniques that you can learn, but tonight that's not really what I'm going to focus on. I felt like the Lord um, has taught, uh, has called me or asked me tonight to talk more about the heart of prayer. And the heart of prayer is about intimacy with God. And sometimes I think we can get so focused on getting the five steps to getting our breakthrough. Um, that we, we miss the heart of God. And specifically what I felt like the Lord wanted me to teach on and talk about tonight is cultural reformation. And, and, and so what is a cultural reformation? What does that have to do with prayer? So I want to I kind of share with you guys some things the Lord has been dealing with my heart for over a year that I've actually never shared publicly except for once on a podcast Shagoon and I did where I took about three minutes and shared something, but I've, not, I've downloaded this for a, almost a year now, and this has been on my heart for a long time, uh, about some things that God is dealing with as our nation, I believe, co collectively, but then also, I think, for each and every individual person in here. And so, if you've been coming to our church for a while, you know, we've, we've, well, we've talked about revival all year, right? We're looking through the book of Acts and all these different outpourings of the Holy Spirit that happened and how these revivals or awakenings happened, and that would like, draw people to Jesus, right? And, and then cause the gospel just to spread. It would go viral, right? That's been like my, the whole theme, right? Gospel going viral because of these outpourings, these great revivals, um, and I'm, I very much believe we need that. But last year I was praying in my car. I had just, just dropped my oldest son, Paul, off at school. And I was on my way home. And I don't even remember what had happened in the news. But uh, needless to say, if I was watching the news, it was probably bad news, right? <laughs> and, and it was negative, And it was a lot of negativity and whatever. And I just began to cry out to the Lord. And I began to say, God. Yeah, I began to cry out for revival and awakening. And then all of a sudden I began to say, God, we need a reformation in this country. And I don't know if you've ever prayed something and you didn't know what you were praying. You just started saying words, but all of a sudden it was like God started talking to you about what you just said. Because I said Reformation, and I'll be honest with you, I'm familiar with the, the Reformation with Martin Luther, but that's not really a term I use a lot. That's not in my vernacular. It used to not be. And then the, and the, the Holy Spirit began to deal with my heart, and he's like, do you mean that? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> you know all the, 
You know all that thou knowest. Do I mean that, right? And, uh, and, and so he began to ask me again, and he began to show me what a reformation is. And I actually believe this is something we need to pray into. So what is a reformation? How is it different than a revival? So a revival means to take something that is dead or dying and bring it back to life. And so um, imagine a six-foot-tall, 180-pound man, good health, whatever, gets into the pool, stays under the water too long, and he needs to get CPR. And so the lifeguard's going to come up, and he's going to revive the man. You with me? That's what a revival is. It's something that has a good form but is dead or dying and needs to have life breathed back into it. But you take a six-foot, 180-pound, say, point guard or whatever, he's in pretty good physical health, right? He just had, a, he just had an accident, but overall his life is heading in the right direction. He just made a mistake. Or, or just got in a bad state and he just needed to be revived. That's what God does when he revives churches that are overall doing pretty well, doing a lot of the right things, but maybe they lost their love for Jesus. Like in their church in Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, he said to return to your first love. You're doing all the good works, but you've lost your passion for me, and so you need to be revived. You guys with me so far? Okay, but a reformation is something completely different. If you look at the word... It's a compound word, re, meaning to do again, and form, meaning to make or create. I'm going to say that again. Re means to do again. Form means to make or create. And what the Lord began to show me is he actually, while we want revival in our nation, if we go back to the same form as what we've been doing before, we're going to get the same bad results that we're in right now nationally. And across the church and churches globally. We, we need a new form. And that needs to be a form in line with the word of God. And we've been so far away from that so long that what happens is people get revived. They get a goose bump. And then they think they're living for Jesus. And they're not. They just got a goose bump. But they go back to the same lifestyle. Same belief systems. That we actually need to bring. We need to see change. Is this, is this making sense? To everyone. And, and I believe God wants to reform and rechange. This is actually why, this is part of where God spoke this to me, is where I, I felt like He made show me this is why you, Brian, you're called. And this is so not in thing to do right now or cool thing to do right now to teach verse by verse through the scripture. Because so many people, and I'm saying this, obviously unbelievers don't understand the Bible, but like 98% of pastors don't understand the Bible. And a lot of Christians don't understand the Bible, and that's how we've got off into all these crazy belief systems that we have. And I felt like the Lord just began to challenge me. You just need to take verse by verse and explain these things. My answers are all in my word, but you got to explain it to people. you got to dig into it for yourself, make sure you understand it, but you got to begin to explain it to people. Because my people, they perish for a lack of knowledge. And, you know, <clears throat> revivals themselves, somebody asked me, you, you know, what's the difference, you, you, you know, kind of what's... I told somebody about a revival one time, and usually how they start, it's usually pre great preaching and signs and wonders and miracles. And somebody asked me, they said, what's the difference between preaching and teaching? And I see, said, preaching is usually twice as loud and half as long. I'm going to say that again. Preaching is usually twice as loud and half as long. Teaching is where, preaching is proclaiming, teaching is exclaiming, or ex explaining, I should say. We need to be explained how the kingdom of God works. And because when we don't understand that, we can't properly align ourselves with what God is doing, and we get all confused, and we get all sorts of crazy doctrines and crazy things. So let me just give you a few examples. I mean, some of this is pretty, pretty obvious, but like we're right now living in a nation, which just shocks me, but it's also affecting the churches where people don't know what sexual identity is. This should not be a thing. This happened to me one time, but I was just married, and I went to Outback Steakhouse, and I got confused between which bathrooms because they use Australian words for it. <laughs> and I really had to go, and I went into the Sheila's bathroom instead of the blokes, but I quickly re re <laughs> retraced my steps. 
But we shouldn't have questions about gender identity. My wife uh, taught school for about 10 years, and when she first started teaching school, she was teaching at um, kind of at a, a magnet school. We had both middle and high school students. She, in 2009, had one student that said they were gay. Didn't have anybody that had was wanting to change their gender. When she stopped teaching in 2020, about 20% of her class identified as either gay or bisexual. How does that happen within a 10-year time frame? We've gotten away from our roots. We've gotten away from truth. She, I don't think she had anybody that was wanting to change genders. I mean, that was like even 15, 20 years. Nobody, you, I mean, occasionally you would hear someone one person, but it wasn't a thing by and large. And now it's something we hear regularly. So that's just one example. So obviously gender identity, but how about family you know, if, if, again, if you've been coming to our church for a while, you've know, said, noticed one of the things I've said is one of the greatest breakdowns in, in our nation is uh, the absence of fathers. And it's the part, it's importance of fathers actually fathering, not just being sperm donors, but fathering children, being involved in their lives, occasionally making them mad at you <laughs> because you teach them stuff that they don't like. Do you know the Bible says you have to endure Sound doctrine. It's like as a pastor, you have to, follow, I have to take, make people endure some stuff that they don't like from the Word of God. Well, my kids, I have to make them endure some things. And they're not always happy with me when I make them eat vegetables or make them go to bed before 3 a.m. in the summer. But you have to father, you have to parent. We've had a breakdown in fathering and being actively involved in our kids' lives and in families the way we should be, and we need to be highly involved because if we're not, we can't complain when the next generation goes crazy. I don't think anybody in here is going to qualify for this one, so I'm going to go ahead and say I was going to say it anyway, but I'm going to blame Mark. Okay. <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying, but it was a good quote. So I'm going to quote Mark. Mark and I were talking about this four or five years ago. You know, we used to have, we, we have one time we had families that were like, we come to church, but then their kids were playing soccer and sports, and so they were in some weeks, some out some weeks. That's demonic. Your, your kids shouldn't be missing church if we will play soccer and basketball. And I love soccer and basketball, and I love sports as much as anybody, but that's ungodly. And I, five years ago, I was probably too nice just to be that blunt, and that's worn off. But, like, I remember you said to me, he said, you know, what we're teaching is not a grace. Because for me, for years, I didn't want to make, make people feel condemned if I was like, you need to be at church on the weekends. And you need to make your kid tell them, no, you can't go play basketball with your friends. You, I mean, look, they're probably ain't going to the pros. And even if they go to the pros, their NBA contract ain't getting them to heaven. They need a relationship with Jesus. Right, And I'm not saying you can't have a relationship with Jesus and go play a basketball and miss church on the weekends. or That's not my point, but my point is, and what Mark said better than I said it was, it's teaching kids to value that which is valuable. There are some things that are more valuable than others. And we have an epidemic, and again, in here I think I'm probably speaking to those that are on fire already, but, but we have an epidemic where we're not teaching people to do right things. And, again, for the longest time, I never wanted anybody to be condemned because, again, in the Bible Belt, everybody's condemned about something. And I didn't want to, make, I didn't want to challenge people, but I would just say, well, you just need to have a relationship with God. But apparently people didn't have enough relationship with God to be like, hey, we're going to actually make a commitment to be in the Word of God every day by grace, not condemned if I miss it, but I'm going to make a choice to not work so many hours or not be involved in so many hours. I'm going to take time in the Word of God and to pray every day, and I'm going to be in daggone church every weekend, Period. Point blank and period, under vacation or whatever. It's just, this is what you do if you want to grow, if you're serious about having your own personal life change and then also seeing change in a nation. And that comes back to family life. And we have families that don't do that anymore. And we need to. We need to prioritize Jesus above all else. How about this one? Third one, the pursuit of the dollar above the pursuit of God. How many people make decisions more in our culture, make more decisions based around money than they do about Jesus? Work 80, 90 hours a week, but don't have time to study the Word, spend time with their family. That's not good, good is it? God's supposed to be our provider. Or how about this one? Pursuing the fourth one, pursuing fame and ego above drawing our worth from Jesus. You 
you know, the younger crowd. I mean, it's, it's, it's how many likes and shares you get on Instagram and Facebook and all this other stuff. And we're trying to, I mean, you have people trying to build their brand. And it's, and it's a cultural thing. And we make decisions about impressing people instead of, man, Jesus is already impressed with us. Who do I care? What all I need to do is respond to him, right? This is a cultural thing. And this is something that we need reformed. Again, I'm not here tonight to teach everybody. Let's just bless what we're doing. Again, I mean, most of y'all are in here. Y'all are, man, y'all are, y'all are here on Wednesday night. Want to pray. So y'all are doing really good. I'm, again, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just saying things that are on my heart that I feel like the Lord has challenged uh, us with. All right? And, and so, and then, well, I don't even want to get into the fifth. Well, I'm going to get into the fifth one because... Even within the church world, and this is something, again, if you go here, right, then, you know, we, we teach the word and we believe in the gifts of the spirit and all that. But, but we have churches now that there is no, it's on, it's, on, it's on the haze, the lights, the this, the that, the brand. But where's the substance? Where's the beef? We, we need the actual beef of the word of God. We need the meat of the word of God. And again, we have haze and, and lights, and I like all that. You may not, but I like all that stuff, all right? But haze ain't saving me. <laughs> and actually, what's scary is we've had a culture that, that 30, 40 years ago, a bunch of pastors got together. And like, we need to be a little bit more like the culture because we can actually reach people, and they heard God. And then now you've had a second level, a second generation that that's, they've all, they've, they've, they've got a form, but they have no substance. And this is where we're going again, you go here, you don't get that, you get a lot of substance, but I'm saying this is where we are as a culture. How do you know that, Brian? Because I taught the people, and what they don't know about the Bible will shock you. And, and so I think there was a study that came out recently, Billy was showing me this, but it's, um, I, I, I forget, but it was like 6% of like all children's pastors and youth pastors or something had a biblical worldview. It was like 42% of pastors. It was a ridiculous Barna survey. I may not have the exact statistics right, but um, that's about what it was. And it's like, that's crazy. Well, no wonder our nation goes the way it goes and people think maybe abortion's okay and LGBTQ and all these other things. And again, I'm not mad at anybody, all right? But <laughs> I just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, if you, I don't want to see our nation head the direction it's gone, amen? So I'm, let me go to Romans 12 too. Have I made everybody mad yet? <laughs> so this is the verse that God spoke to me that just rocked me. This is what scared me and made me say, do I really want a reformation or not? Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. The word transform there is the Greek word metamorpho. It's where we get our word metamorphosis from. So butterfly goes up a tree, spins a cocoon, or a caterpillar goes up a tree, spins a cocoon, comes out a butterfly. Is that a reformation? Yeah, when in a caterpillar comes out the other side, something completely different. It reformed. Okay, but here's what scared me. And here's where I think we are as a nation right now. And maybe where you are personally right now. When the caterpillar goes in there, into the cocoon, spins the cocoon, what it actually does is it releases enzymes and it basically digests itself and it becomes an ooze. It has no form. It doesn't look like the caterpillar but it doesn't look like a butterfly yet either. It looks like, you know what it looks like? A mess. And this is just my opinion. I'm not saying this is thus saith the Lord, but how many of you thought, man, after like some of the things that we had a couple of years ago with COVID and lockdowns, how many of you thought we would, the third grade awakening would be well underway by now? How many of you really believe that? I mean, I thought, I mean, I was just shocked that it hasn't. Here's what I feel like the Lord has kind of shown me out of this. And he used Pastor Greg Moore to confirm it. Um, the problem is, if all we would have done is just had a bunch of goosebumps and gotten on fire for six weeks like we did with 
we'd be back in the same situation that we were in just a few years later. I think God is wanting to use this season to actually bring change. I'm going to say it in a way we'll all get. There's a difference between with eating. There's a difference between uh, doing a crash diet and making a lifestyle change. You know what's easy to do? The crash diet. Two weeks, I lose 15 pounds and whatever. But that doesn't work. I know I've tried them over the years. But when you actually make a conscious lifestyle change to change what you eat, what you put in your body, the amount of calories that you do, and this is what you're going to do forever, and that you work out and get a certain amount of sleep, that actually does your good body good for the long term. But it's a lot harder to do, but the long-term consequences or the long-term rewards are a heck of a lot better, right? You with me? I believe this is what God wants for us. He wants more than a goosebump, but he's not asking for our goosebump. He's not asking for a part of our life. He wants everything. And he wants everything by his grace, right? Not legalism and the law and thinking he's mad at us, but he wants us 100% in. And it means every part of my life now has to come before him. And God, do I have something that you want? Do I value something more than I value you? And if I value something more than I value you, you you get it. You need everything, 100% of me, period. And I think that's where he is with our nation. So I'm going to give you an example of Romans, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm going to give you an example, natural example, two in the scripture. Then I'm going to talk to you about how do we do this, because I've just said some pretty hard stuff. And so there is, there is some, a lot of grace within this. You can't change you, right? How many of you can change you? Good. <laughs> You're not deceived. So, a couple of examples of reformations throughout history. How many of you are familiar with Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation? Right? The Catholic Church, they were selling indulgences. Martin Luther started reading his Bible and figuring out this wasn't in the Word of God. We're, we're not supposed to do this. So, he posted his 95 theses on the wall, and, and, and the Catholic Church kicked him out. But what, what caused Martin Luther to realize, I don't have to do all these good works, sell indulgences, and do all this stuff to get God to earn salvation or get God to bless me? It was the Word of God. It was Romans 1.17. He, uh, he read, the just shall live by faith. He got a revelation, because the Word of God was lost for years. You had a handful in the Catholic Church that could read it, and the people didn't have it, didn't have access to it. They had lost access to the Word of God, and he got a revelation of the just live by faith, not by buying and selling of indulgences, not by doing all these good works. It's by faith. It's grace and faith. And out of that, an entire movement started that we're still a part of. And it wasn't an addition to the Catholic Church. It was an absolute break with the legalistic system that was taught in that. This is what the Word of God, this is what a reformation is. This is what I'm saying we need as a nation, reforming. I'm saying 100% change, and I'm saying that also individually because none of us by ourselves can change a nation. We can, I'm really not really talking to you about changing a nation as much as changing you. If enough of us individually change, we'll change a nation. Second example, and, and you can just look this up. It's in 2 Kings 22 and 23. The greatest, uh, greatest probably reformation in the Old Testament was King Josiah. He's, it said that he restored true worship to Israel. And what had happened is for about 60 years, there were two evil kings, and the people had lost the word of God. Imagine that. You lost the Torah? I would, I'm going to tell you what. If somebody works for me, loses my Bible, I'm going to be mad at them. <laughs> Kidding. But, but you know what? They lost the word of God. You lose the word of God, they lost it. And it was lost for 60 years. And you know what the people started doing? They started building idols in high places. They started building idols and sexual, getting into sexual immorality near the temple. The priests were doing it. Again, we have pastors in churches right now marrying two women and two men. Because they've lost sight of the truth of the word of God. Anyway, Josiah, they found it, and, and then he, he started reading it and was like, oh, my gosh, no wonder we're not doing very well as a nation. And then people started uh, doing it, and Josiah started, you know, uh, doing what he had to do to make sure those things were carried out. And they got rid of all the idolatry and all of this stuff, and the people reformed and returned to the Word of God. And it's considered 
uh, probably one of the greatest reformations in the Old Testament. It probably is the greatest reformation in the Old Testament. Okay? So this is what happens when we return to the Word. So I'm teaching on prayer, but I'm telling you to turn to the Word. How funny is that? So well, can I teach on prayer now? All that was for this. Go over to Matthew 26, 39. And so then we're going to pray individually, and then we're going to pray corporately for, for a few minutes. They're, they're showing Prince of Egypt over there across the way, and it goes an hour and a half. So we're going to pray. We're going to be in here. Typically on Wednesdays, I get everybody out by 8.10 or 8.12 because I want little kids to go home and get in bed, and I want people to come back the next Wednesday. This week is the exception because the movie goes a little longer. So anyway, we're going to pray. <laughs> but some of what I just said is really hard. When I said God wants every bit of your life, and I know some of you in here, you grew up in a legalistic church, legalistic churches, and I did, and I, you know, that used to, that bothered me. When I get a revelation of grace, man, that God loves me, he's not mad at me because I mess up, man, that changed everything. But the problem is you can also get over there where you don't, still don't see God as holy and pure. He is my friend, but he's my Lord, Right? And I can't go in friendship where I haven't first gone with him in lordship. He is God, number one. And, and I have to understand that. And so I want to show you Matthew 26, verse 39. It's a prayer of consecration Jesus prayed when God had told him, you've got to go to the cross. And this is going to maybe be a wrinkle in somebody's brain here. But Jesus did not want to go to the cross. Jesus did not want to go to the cross. He wanted us, but he didn't want to go through the process to get us. Because imagine having nails put through your hand, being pierced through the side, all the physical punishment, also knowing that he's going to have all sin for all time laid on him, being separated from his father. He didn't want to do that. That's why when he goes into the garden, he takes the disciples with him, and they begin to pray, and he begins to pray and cry out to the Lord, God, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, right? It's a prayer of consecration. Here's what I want you to see. My will versus thy will. Did Jesus' will deviate from the Father's? Yeah. Did he sin? No. So here's something you got to learn. Just because you want to do something opposite than what God wants you to do does not mean you're in sin. You just live in a fallen human body. But you're not sinning. Now, it's when you persist and do the wrong thing anyway. That's sin. But here's why I'm teaching this. Because if what I, look, what I just said got under my skin and got under my flesh. Because I'm like, I don't want to give God everything. I want to give him most things. There's a couple things I'd like to hang on to. Just being real. But he wants everything. Because the more of him and the less of me, the more of his glory comes forth, right? More of the spirit, right? But that's where I go to him and say, God, I don't like what you're telling me to do here. I don't like this. This is not what I would choose for me. And I have not something I'm thinking about that God's dealing with me about right now. A difficult situation. God, I, I don't like what we're having to do here. But your will be done. And I go to him with it. And I just... I'm just real with my father and just say, God, I don't want to do this. But then he'll come along and say that my strength is sufficient in your weakness. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus goes on to say, I didn't even read my verse yet, did I? That's not good. Matthew 26, verse 39. Let me just show you this. This is the second time Jesus prayed this. He said, but he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, Oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. His will was different than the Father's, and he didn't send. And what, and let me just, I'm going to just keep reading. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is is weak. And again, a second time he went and prayed. And he actually had to pray this three times. That's the crazy thing. He's Jesus. Never sinned. He had to pray it three times to get his will in line. So if Jesus had to pray something three, three times to get his will in line, is it possible you and I might have to go before God three times, four times, five times, six times? 
I've met some of y'all 12 times. <laughs> 200 times. But you know, you just go until you get it. And God does the work in your heart. Amen? And you're not in sin. But um, anyway, that's all I had tonight. <laughs> but what I want to do now is I just want to pray for us. Um, and actually, if I can get you guys to stand up with me. What, what I want to do is I want to pray for us individually. And I want to give everybody just a few minutes just, just to pray. Just go to God. I mean, again, you may, be, you may not have anything as I begin to talk that things that you're holding back from God. And again, I'm not trying to make everybody sin conscious or whatever, but you know when you've got a part of your life that just not as surrendered to Jesus as it should be. And, and that you just would go to him like a loving father and say, God, that, man, this area in my life, Lord, or this, 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 whatever, this stronghold, God, I give it to you. Help me. And you just come boldly to the throne of grace, right? And this is a prayer of consecration because God wants to reform us individually and he wants to reform our nation. And so we're going to do this for just a few minutes because I felt like we need to start individually. And then from there, we're going to move out and we'll begin to pray and break into groups. And we're going to pray collectively over some things concerning our nation right now and seeing a great awakening, seeing a great revival in our nation. Amen. So, Father, I just pray for everybody in here, those watching online, I'm praying for myself also, God, that, that, that God, I, I just pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would help each and every one of us to be a living sacrifice to you, like Romans 12, 1 says, Lord, that we would not, that by the mercy of God, that we would be a living sacrifice to you. That is our reasonable service, God. And that, God, I just pray for every single person in here that, that they would be able to yield themselves to you, to every part of their life, Lord. That's a, that is our high call as believers, God. And it's not something we can do in our natural flesh. It's not something we can do by striving or working hard. It actually takes a work of the Spirit, God. And so I pray that over myself and over everybody in here, God, that, that you would do such a work of the Spirit that things that maybe people are holding back that you've been dealing with their hearts about uh, for the last weeks, months, maybe years even, God, that they would just these parts of their life to you the the parts where they said lord you can have anything but you can't have that they'll actually give you that whether it's their reputation lord whether it's a pursuit of money whether it's a particular sin that they're hiding out or whatever else god or or whether it's a religious stronghold, Lord, maybe, maybe they've, they've, they've been hearing this truth about the unconditional radical love of God for years and years and years, and, and they've not really submitted themselves to it yet. They, 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 they know they should, but they can't somehow, and they try to earn right standing based on good works. Whatever it is, God, I pray you reveal it to us areas that we're holding back, God, and by your grace you transform our hearts, God. As we were praying, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me something, and he said that the reason a lot of people can't give everything to Jesus is because of fear. And faith works by love. And what that means is when you understand how much your Father loves you, it causes your faith to work. You're like a child. And as a child, you would, hopefully if you had a good home you grow up in, you, you knew your mommy and daddy were always going to provide clothes and food and toys and and you didn't stress out about that and the areas that sometimes that we want to hold back it's because of fear it's you know, what's going to happen and and the reality is God's just wanting to minister his love and saying I've got so much more for you I've got so much more for you trust me with it trust me with the situation trust me with the care trust me with the financial situation trust me with the health situation you pursue me and leave the results Leave the consequences to me. I will move on your behalf. My grace is greater. Where sin abounds, my grace abounds that much more. My grace hyper abounds. Where weakness abounds, my grace hyper abounds is what the Lord is saying. Where your flesh, uh, where your flesh is weak, is saying my grace hyper abounds. My love hyper abounds. And he just wants to root us in the love of God, the unmerited favor of God. And so, Father, I just thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for that, God. And I just personally, every area of my life, God, is yours.
Lord, every time I see your word say something different than what I believe or I think, Lord, I make a commitment, Lord, with by your spirit, I will believe your word and I'll obey your word, whether I feel like it or not. And so, Father, we just thank you for that, God. And I just thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as I was praying this and these scriptures that, you know, my Andrew Womack, my spiritual father, he, he, these are the verses in Romans 12, 1 and 2 that changed his life. And one of the things that he said about Romans 12, 1 and 2 about being a living sacrifice and renewing your mind is if you don't, if you're not a living sacrifice, number one, and renewing your mind, even if God showed you the perfect job, the perfect career, the perfect person, if you haven't become a living sacrifice and uh, and, and renewed your mind with God's word, that you'll ultimately mess up these other things that you would want in life, like the perfect person to marry or the perfect career or whatever else. This is the number one call, is to be a living sacrifice and then to renew our mind. And so, Father, we just thank you for that, God. I just thank you for that, for your grace, God. And, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that we're able to just yield every area of our life to you, God. Hallelujah. Lord, I also pray this over our nation right now. God, get this, this, this concept of Romans 12, 1 and 2 out to people, God, nationally. However you do it, God, I just pray that that would be on the, the lips of pastors, ministers, evangelists, prophets. They would come on K-Love, whatever. Uh, that people would hear. This is something, this is just basic Christianity, that if we would just do these things, God, your will would happen in our lives, and then collectively in our nation, it would happen. That God, that people would just get the reality of these truths. So, um, okay, well, um, I wanted to do that initially, just, just individually, deal with some stuff, but I also want to just take the last few minutes. We've got maybe 15, 20 minutes or so before um, the movie over there is going to end. Um, so I want to break into groups as um, and just pray over some different things. Maybe individually you have something, but also corporately. So if I can get a few folks. Craig, will you lead a group? You and Melissa, y'all lead a group. Mark, um, will you and you and Keith, y'all y'all lead a group? <coughs> Coy disappeared. I'm Tanya, will you lead a group? And um, hallelujah. When Coy comes back, he will be drafted into the army of God to lead a group. But uh, anyway, y'all find, get, get towards Craig, if, Melissa, and if Mark. If y'all hand, hold your hands up, Tanya, if y'all hold your hands up so people can find you guys. And y'all cry. And I'm going to give y'all some topics to start with individually. Cordy, Coy, you have been drafted in the army of God. You're going to lead a prayer group. <laughs> and so anyway, Coy will be up here at the front. Y'all, y'all go to the, I guess go to the four corners, right? So if I get Coy up here and... He'll lead a group, and then Craig and Melissa over here at this group. Mark, if you, and, if you and Keith will take some folks back over there, and then Tanya, if you'll be back over in the left. And so we're going to pray over th- some things collectively um, as a nation, or as a church, for our nation. All right, Tanya, I'm going to, will you guys pray over our, our, our kids, our families, and schools, and just start with that, and then go wherever God takes you, but just, just the educational system, our kids, our schools, families, that whole thing. Um, Coy, will you guys, will you guys pray for over, the, uh, over the next election that God will put in the people he wants in, in, in this, and just pray over the election, and 2024 and the 2024 election. Start with that, and then wherever you go from there, that's 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 your starting point. But then, if you get into healing or whatever else, do that. Um, Craig, will you just begin? You guys, we all begin to pray for just mass evangelism and salvations, and um, just man, we see a third grade awakening. 
And Mark and Keith, I'm all out of it. Y'all just get to freelance it. Just pray as you want. <laughs> Whatever the Holy Spirit lays on your heart. We're just going to pray. Just, just, just pray uh, for our nation. You've been listening to Pastor Brian Clark of Grace Life Church. For service times, video or audio of past services, contact info, or to make a tax-deductible donation, visit us online at gracelifetriad.com. Thank you, and have a blessed day.